uh, greetings and blessings to all. I'm going to make this uh, quick video here just to show you what I'm working on. Let me share a screen here, um, right here. So pretty much we're going to correct. We're going to, I'm working on correcting my um, credit reports. So everybody, this typical way, they send it to the PO box, this and that. We're going in like a different way, uh, more aggressive. So I've done all like a lot of research and stuff, and I'll show you right here. If I open up a new tab, and then I go here, this is like discharge debt DD, the double Ds, right? I'm gonna hit them all. I'm gonna make another one right now for new folder. Add a folder, TransUnion, all caps. Right there, all caps, these corporate fictions here. So uh, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. That's just the order that I remember them. But anyway, here, I bookmark everything here for the research and I'm going to show you because we're coming in more aggressive open 19 tabs here so start off with like the senior management you're going to find out who you're going to send it to in this particular situation I'm only sending it to one in, in others you know if I'm going after like a utility company or so or if I'm buying a car at a dealership which I am I'm going to send it to the indenture trustee trustee you know everybody I'm going to pretty much Full, full, full attack, full attack. But for right now, uh, and the way we're coming in aggressive is we're sending them a um, a bill on the first shot. Ten days, ten days, ten days. I'm gonna share all uh, you know as much as I can. But um, I have been wanting to learn how to do the administrative process for so long, but I'm like, ah, you know, I don't want to do something wrong. It, when you're doing it through a trust, it makes it so easy because I guess the only, the uh, biggest fear I have is, all right, ultimately it may, you know, it may go to court. When it goes to court, you do not want to come in. You do not want to come in. You, everyone knows that they ask for ID when you come into the courthouse, right? So, um, you know, if you go up there and say, "Hey, I'm 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 a living man and stuff," do you think they're not going to go down and and check the register and check the uh, cameras to see who you came in as? They will. And I don't know. I just want to. It makes it so much easier if you're coming in as a trust, and it makes it even easier if you're coming in as a trust that's not that doesn't have your name in it. So for all of you that have done your name changes and such, you know, um, lawfully, you know, at the court and stuff. That, that, you know, that may be better. But anyway, that's how we're coming in. So first, you're going to decide who you're going to send it to. I believe here, you know, I'm sending it to this guy, the chief C uh, CEO of Experian. And this, I'll show you, Experian Information uh, Solutions, Inc. is is the, you know, owner of Experian. So uh, Brian C Casson. Uh, DBA Chief Executive Officer for Experian Information Solutions, Inc. Uh, this is the exact address I'll show you. They are IRS Employer Identification Number. And I'll, I'll go over these right here because I'm, I'm CCing uh, or the Director of the Bureau of Consumer Protection and I'm CCing the Director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. These are two different agencies. Um, one is U.S., and one is from the Federal Reserve, I found out, which, uh, you know, I guess they do want to protect our rights, too. But, um, okay, so let me continue. So these guys, obviously, you know, I put in the EIN number for everything, but these guys are, you know, to protect us. So, um, you know, from previous videos now. So I'm sending it to him. Uh, this is his profile here uh ceo you know in certain situations you want to get the cfo cc him for not this situation but if you're going against something else uh you want to make sure it gets to, to the, the cfo uh, you know for certain situations because i'm going if you see here i'm going to the power company over here i don't know if i went over this uh, you know, the my internet, you know, phone, I hate Verizon, but I'm going to go with, uh, you know, T-Mobile is best uh, in 
really, I guess I'm sure there's others, but in Florida, Verizon Wireless sucks. When I was down in Florida, TD Bank, this one right here, I'm going to hit them hard. TD Bank, I'm hitting hard because I I, I went to a dealership to buy a car. It's just a minivan, you know what I mean? Um, I don't want to go crazy. But uh, they declined my, what you're going to do, you, I, what I did was I went in to buy this vehicle. I told them specifically, I only want to run a one credit, uh, you know, credit app only with TD Bank. Because I bank with TD Bank. TD Bank is the easiest to open. I went to like five different banks. TD Bank is the easiest to open up trust accounts. I swear to God, I printed a trust from off, off online. Like I just printed it like last minute in the morning. And I just, uh, you know, wrote it all out, filled it out. I went to five different banks and they, they said, uh, you know, this doesn't really look official. They sent it to their legal department. They didn't open up a trust foreign, foreign trust bank account. TD Bank did. Uh, so, and then what I'm going to do is when I do send out notices to these people and the indenture trustee and the agent and like really go full force, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to try and, you know, I'm, I'm going to do the, um, auto loan, right. TD auto finance that, and I'm going to do a credit card, uh, and I'm going to hit them hard and I'm going to try and do a mortgage through TD bank. So this way, because the indent, the trustees and the indenture trustees and the agent, they, they are all, um, that's like the top of the, you know, like the, in other words, they handle all of the sub companies. You have to do the research and just confirm that fact. But to my knowledge, they, they do handle all the subsidiaries of TD bank, TD bank, TD Bank Auto Finance, uh, TD Bank Mortgage, or you know that kind of stuff. Anyway, and then the Water Authority. But honestly, I'm hitting. Why I'm hitting these three first is because then you think I'm gonna I'm gonna hit American Express. Let me do that right now. American Express. I'm gonna hit hard. Oops. Oops. So American Express, I'm going to hit hard because with this, if you do this right, Amex, right? Let me see if I can share. I'm going to do it right now. Uh, give me one moment because I can't share certain stuff. Okay. Uh, let me do control find um, card. Okay. Two of the eight. Oh, this is messing me up the Zoom. Give me one moment. This is important right here. Okay. Now watch this. You're going to like this. All right. Truth in Lending Act. I mean, this is just the way I like to read it. I don't like to read it on a full screen. Okay, watch this. Notice, it is a fact. Uh, this is just like an affidavit form. Claimant is aware. Transactions authorized by claimant's credit card and credit card is defined in both C, uh, the Fair Credit Reporting Agency and has the same as the definition in the Truth in Lending Act as any card, plate, coupon book, or other credit device existing for the purpose of obtaining money, property, labor, and services on credit, thus making claimant's social security card a credit card. So the Amex card or any credit card is an extension of your credit, of your social security card. So this account was authorized by claimant's social security number, a credit card, and therefore must be excluded. Uh, this on for claimants, consumer put this reported information published on claimant. Basically, where I'm getting that with that is Amex is issuing your credit. So uh, once you do a dispute, once you get that first bill, because I just got an Amex card, and it uh, at at this time. It uh, I just started using it, 
uh, because I want them to show me what my balance is. And then I'm going to hit them with, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't owe a balance. Uh, how do I word this? Um, it's not fresh on my mind. Let me stick on this, but I am going to hit them. I'm going to hit them. And basically they're not going to be able to collect and they're not going to be able to cancel my card because I'm going to hit them, you know, at the right places. Uh, and like I said, I'm hitting these people. We are hitting these people in, in my group um, aggressively. And honestly, we are sending them uh, a, a bill at the same time. First shot. First shot. Uh, so now let me continue. So this guy, next. Uh, you know, this is where I verify this address, but I verified in a few different places. And then also what you do is you, you, you do a zip code search to get like the last four digits of this address. I, I don't know exactly why, but I, I know that it makes it more official for some reason. So you basically do this, you know, you put the information in here and then I thought it's saved, but you know, you know what I mean? So you get these last these last four digits. So for nine six nine two six two six nine two six two six. Because on another one, I'll show you it. Um, it what do you call it? It changed for for one of those agencies. I'll I'll go over it later in just a little bit. Next, then over here, I'm not going against this company, but they do own. Uh, Experian, but there I'm not doing. I'm not doing international right now. I'm not sending it to Dublin. But these people owe, uh, own um, Experian Information Solutions right here. I got their EIN Experian Information Solutions, and I'm going to prove it. Right, you know, I'm going to prove it. And because the address, the address nine, see the address corresponds. So this is how you got to do this research. Every company is different. You got to do some searching because usually over here, they, if it was a um, domestic company, they have to report. But since this, and honestly, I think it's tied in with the um, with the crown because I saw when I did research here, you'll see on this report, on another report, it said, see how over here it says all who owns what? And everything is owned by this Gus guy. It's a you know, it's an entity. Gus PLC. They're also in the UK, but somewhere I saw that it said the Prince Trust. So anyway, I'm not messing with those guys. I'm just going, you know, domestic here, Experian Information Solution, and you'll see here that see somebody already made uh, somebody already won this suit. Michael T. Dreher. Plaintiff versus Experian Information Solution Inc. is the defendant. So if you read through this, I'll, I'll I'm gonna put all these links right in the video. Um, I think they took them down on one of my videos, but I'm starting to do this not live. I would have loved to do it live, but it's like eight o'clock in the morning here, um, because I get most of my work done in the morning. <clears throat> but and I usually gather all this stuff if I want to attack a company because it's nighttime and I don't like having all different kind of lights on. Um, but in the daytime is when I do paperwork because I could see the papers, you know, much easier. But at night is when I like, all right, who am I going to hit tomorrow? I'm going full fledged, full frontal, full frontal, full attack. Give me one moment. Now. So. All right. So you could look through this. I'll include this. I uh, see the Gus guy, and if you if you do a search, the it's it's actually comes out to be a guy. It's funny. Uh, uh, I found it somewhere. It was this guy is Gus. It's kind of like funny because it's like there's a company, but I don't know where I found it. But funny. Now, um, see UK. See, no filings. They have only, I don't know, all this tax stuff. 
So let me make sure I didn't miss anything. I went, so this is who I'm getting, who I'm attacking, which we saw here. Brian Casson, DBA, Chief Executive Officer for Experian Information Inc., 475 Anton Boulevard, Coast Domestic, California. I got the four digits, IRS number. And I went over this case. So this is the Gus company. This is how you search for the last four digits of the zip code. It somewhat makes it more official. And that's it. So now, now we get to the Federal Trade Commission. I mean, I had so many windows open doing the research, but then the then I start deleting the ones that are not pertinent, and I just take these, and I just drop them right in here. Bloop. So Federal Trade Commission, you see it's .gov, so it's United States. Uh, so that's how you know. An official website of the United States government, how do you know? The .gov means it's official, so that's how you know it's official. And then we'll, 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 it does, this doesn't appear on the consumer, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So, um, as we'll see in just a moment. Okay. So now contact the Federal Trade Commission. So now I want to confirm the, you know, the addresses. So I'll show you Samuel A. Levine. I had to do like a lot of research because the, the 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 template that we had was from a while ago. And because uh, uh, first thing, if uh, just a, I have to make a bit of advice. I'm on this for so many years. I remember when I had my first legal notice in demand, like a fee schedule. When I first saw that in around 2016, 2017, first, first I saw it and then took time. Like when I finally realized and I read through it and I figured out like what that meant, I had such a surge of, of, of power. When I printed that thing, I, I remember driving one day and I had it with me. And then it wasn't even my name wasn't even on. I just printed it. I felt such a surge of power. I said, I am invincible. Like I was I was driving down uh, the highway in my in my truck, which they wind up taking from me. But, you know, it takes time for you to reprogram your mind to understand, to start overstanding how this stuff works. But it is so empowering. It is so empowering once you find out how to utilize these things to, to remove yourself out of bondage. You know, how to remove yourself out of bondage anyway. So I that's it. I just remember I was like ecstatic, you know, when I found out. So now I'm implementing on how to use it, you know. So this guy here now. Uh, confirming the address. So, yeah. Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. here. And then I got the last. Oh, I didn't get the last four digits for this one yet. I'm going to do that. Uh, well, you already know how to do it, so I'm not going to do it. All right, because I, I, I'll do it later. I just want to get through this because I want to get work done and... I, I lose my train of thought. So this is the, I'm CCing the, um, the Bureau of Consumer Protection. I'm CCing them. And then you look here and Samuel A. Levine, he's not even on here. Why? Because this is the Federal Trade Commission. The, I'm not sending it to these. I want to send it specific because if you look, uh, it's you look at the bureau, the office and, direct, and directors, there's a lot of different, Offices. See, and I, I bureaus. Yeah, it's a lot of different offices. You want to spend this specifically to the to the Bureau of Consumer Protection. See, here it is, here it is right here. Samuel A. Levine, which you'll see right here. Samuel Levine. And then if you want, sometimes you you could do a search like this, right? Search. And then you write current.
and then you see Samuel Levine serves as director of the federal. And then, you know, you want to make sure this is the right date, because if you put the guy's name in, it could be like from 2013, which exactly is what happened in, in a template someone had that w were creating these um, basically challenging, uh, disputing information on these credit reports. We um the, the the template had somebody from like 2013. So you have to get open these windows up and then basically make sure you find out. You see, you gotta make sure you see 2022, you gotta make sure it's current. Is the acting, you know? Samuel serves serves as off this website, as there he, you know, you can't, you gotta make sure. So you just have to confirm because otherwise, but if you send it to the right address. They'll know, even if it was a um, previous commissioner, that's okay as long as you send it to the right address. Okay. Current, and then let's see what else I got here. Okay. Current director, see, as of 2021. So I already had this bookmark. And then? You could bookmark it if you work on it the night before and, you know, you want to bookmark it. So this way in the morning, all you do is boom, open up 26 tabs and then start your paperwork because you have everything all organized and you got to have it in sequence. And then now we're going to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So right here, this is the Jane, the, the main page that I bookmarked, you know, with the address and such. I really have to adjust this air conditioning because uh, something is getting me lightheaded here. I'm just going to shut it off for a second. Give me a moment. All right. Now. Because it got up to like 60, like 59, 60 degrees yesterday here in New York. Before that, it was like below, you know, like 23 degrees. So we have a fluctuation in, in temperature. Uh, I, the reason I, I put the AC on, even with my heat on, is I need that oxygen. All right. So now here we got the Rohit Chopra, DBA Director of Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Oh, look at this. So it is a um, an official website of the United States government. But when I did the research, it's it's owned by the Federal Reserve Board. I guess the Federal Reserve Board is, we know that it's, I mean, it could be, oh, I forgot. It's the um, uh, de facto. It's the de facto government, not the de jure government, Federal Reserve. I, I don't know. I, mean, I may be wrong, but anyway, um, All right, so now we're here, CFPB, the director, Rohit Chopra is director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Rohit Chopra is DBA di director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, 17 G Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 2006. Now, the address that shows up here is not 20006, but... Um, which I'll show you. So we just want to confirm and, you know, confirm that he is structure, the Bureau, leadership, calendar, Bureau structure. As of 2023, Rohit Chopra or Chopra, director. So he, you got to confirm these stuff. And I bookmarked this, but it didn't it didn't show. I bookmarked it after I did this, but it resets. And that's it. But if you if you and you know, how come I don't have one with the address? That's probably what this one is. It's this. Right here. Nah, I'm right here. 1700 G Street Northwest. Washington, D.C., 20552. So if you do this, it's kind of weird, but oops, 
I did this wrong. I'm being lazy. See, it comes back two zero zero six. I can't even back um back click on this. So it comes up two zero zero six, not the two not the two zero five five two, but seventeen hundred G Street, Northwest Washington, DC. Seventeen hundred G Street, Northwest Washington, DC. I'm gonna go with this address. And you know the post office they'll still make sure it gets there. Uh that's it. So I'm gonna make these quick videos. Let me see how long I'm on. Um I can't even see. I don't know. So let me see any more bookmarks. So that's it. Um regarding Experian. And like I said. I mean, in a nutshell, what you want to do, you basically make a document. You know, you make a document. You make a document, right? You, If you're going to do it under your name, you got to name it something. Name it, um, you know, uh, credit card information dispute, whatever you, whatever you want. You're going to have all the laws. I went over many of them. Let me see if I have any in, in here. Uh, and then you're just going to, oh, you got to get that book. Like, um, You know, what is that? A hundred consumer laws or something? A hundred consumer laws PDF. PDF. Affidavit. Mm-mm. Didn't I say PDF? Oh, it's all caps. Nah, maybe because of this affidavit thing. See, they don't even want you to find that book. Maybe because I did it in all caps. Let me just try in DuckDuckGo. Does anybody see this thing? What's the name of that book? Anyway, you got to, it, it's something like a hundred uh, consumer uh, protection laws book. And I don't know, you got to get it out of that. I think I covered it one day. Let me just make sure I don't have anything in it. No, on this memo, on this, I, I don't have, I mean, I just copy and paste the notes from when I'm go to the next project. I leave the next one and I just start writing at the top. So it's really long. But uh, Truth and Lending Act, you just got to quote them, you know, and then, you know, say uh, you have to learn this stuff. Because the first thing, like I was saying earlier, if I had to, that's why I was talking about 2017 is because if I had to do this all over again, because I'm going to be, you know, uh, financially secured very soon. But for somebody that might just be starting on this, the I would say, you know, you're thinking about doing secure party credit. Oh, my God, there's a ton of paperwork and stuff. I had, if I show you, I had all my paperwork all ready to mail in. I was going to go and mail them. And then a friend of mine, I asked him, you know, a last question. Hey, what do you do about this bond that you're sending in? And he basically told me, um... I, you know, I'm winding up doing it a different way. I sent all that stuff. I got my green card and it's hard to know what to do next, you know, because what, why, what the argument was, is you're, you're further contracting. The way we're going about this is eliminating and doing injunctions on, or, or, you know, um, what's the word it's not injunction it's um 
um, basically canceling all prior contracts ab initio. Uh, ab initio means from the beginning. So you're canceling all contracts. This is going in the private. So um, you can do this, and you can and you can uh, recover all your accounts, all your accounts without doing, without further contracting with any government agencies. And that might even include the Treasury Direct account. The Treasury Direct account, um, you know, you would be putting all your securities and tying it into one of your bank accounts, but you can be the pass through. You can have one account that's the pass through, that's a legal fiction, but it's that legal fiction is owned by, you know, it's ABC, you know, foreign trust. ABC foreign trust is the foreign entity that's tax exempt. And then you're going to have ABC Enterprises that's going to be a domestic entity, you know, that 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 does, uh, you know, that can have a D and, you know, Dun & Bradstreet number. It's going to have an EIN, domestic EIN. It's going to, you can call it financial. You can call it ABC or John Doe Financial Consultants or Financial. And that is going to be your intermediary that's going to be basically doing all the the work to 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 uh, gather up and uh, control everything they've ever traded on. You basically want it all back, and then you're gonna have a bank account, a you know a bank account that's technically gonna be domestic, and then uh, but it's gonna be owned by a foreign entity. And then once you start getting this stuff in, then you're gonna have foreign bank accounts. And then the foreign bank accounts, yeah, you make a wire transfer, you know, one billion, one point five billion. You 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 know, but even though the domestic bank account that's owned, by, you know, that you're using a foreign EIN number, right? The foreign EIN number that's tax exempt, you know, it can have a bank account here. I'm, I'm proof of it. You know, I've opened one. You know, for a foreign trust, I gave them my ninety eight EIN. But what that doesn't say you can you don't you know you can't have one in. Panama or Canary Islands or wherever, you know, or um, Bahamas or wherever, Switzerland, and then you do a wire transfer there, then it's protected there. All right. So let's see. I'm losing my train of thought. I can't remember what I was talking about. No, there's not much here. There's not much in this in this one, but the one with all the rules. But so now. You got the right, and then uh, you name it, you know, and then you say who it's gonna go to, and you say what law, you know, what laws they've broken, and you say what you want, and then you know, you say how much it costs for your violations, and then you know, you get you do a notary presentment, and then. If you send it to the right people, you could wear it like a baby and it'll work. As long as you say you list those rules, especially the ones, uh, yeah, off of the, you know, all, all these, you know, the Truth and Lending Act, if you mention that. I know I have it somewhere, but I can't bring it up right now. I'll do that another another time. So let's keep this video short. So what do we cover specifically? specifically Experian, all right? Then I'm gonna make another one for Equifax. So if I can, and this is how you do this. If I wanna share all these bookmarks, you go here, you open up a new tab for Firefox, you go to bookmarks, and then you go to manage bookmarks, manage bookmarks. <laughs> these, all I do is dump, I'm the biggest bookmark dumper. I just dump, dump. I just dump stuff. But I keep one that's my bookmarks toolbar. That's the main one. But these are the bookmarks of my entire freaking life. Look, tribes. <laughs> uh, you know, you go through phases in this stuff. You know, you go through phases in this stuff. Brazil. You know, and then anyway, um, bookmarks toolbar, uh, right? So Experian, you go here and then you just go shift, highlight, copy, and then you go to memo, All right? One, two, three, Truth and Lending Act, paste. 
And this is exactly how I'm going to share it in the YouTube. Copy, put it in the notes, or now because in the lives I I can't make the description. It's already self uh, um, auto generated, so that's why I'm doing uploads better because uploads come out. Um, people, many people don't even know about the about the uh, about the live. Um, when they go to your channel, they just go to the, to, to, you know, to the videos and look, there's not much, look, two weeks, then a month ago, then five months ago. But so that's why I'm, I'm going to try when I can, but if it's a quick thing, I'll just go live, but uh, you got to know how to use this. And then, you know, the about tab, if you want to talk to me, I don't have any time. Excuse, give me one moment. Let me mute. Um, come on. I just have to clear my throat, but, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I can't, I'm sorry. You know, I'll assist the best I can, you know, through these videos, maybe a comment here and there. I am very busy now. Uh, you know, if you want to talk to me, go to my abouts tab and contact me here. Um, why? Okay. So yeah, that's why I'm going to upload when I can, but, um, cause the lives people are missing anyway. So back to this. That's how I do that. And back to this. All right. And then I'm going to um, do a video for Equifax. Well, I got some, you know, and let's see. Let's see what I've, what I've gotten so far. Because, I mean, that was a while ago that I started on that. You know, and then same thing. Open all bookmarks leadership you know you go to the here yeah, you find that they have a 10k this makes it easy um well for equifax the reason why you would need the 10k is if you were hitting somebody really hard and then you do control find and then you do uh indenture Right, and then you go. Let me stop this caps. Oops. Okay. Uh, it's just eighteen of them. Then you go through these, and you find the most current one, which is the ninth on twenty twenty one between Equifax trustee and. No, you got to go back once it says ninth eighth. You got to go to the first one because that means they were just repeated it, repeated, 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 first. Right here, U.S. Bank National Association. They're a big one. You see this a lot as trustee. So now you know who the trustee is. So I could not find this for that. See, on the um, on the Experian, I could not find them. Why? Because it's a foreign-owned company. I'm not. I'm not suing anybody. Uh, I'm not doing anything with anybody in a foreign country right now it's just, you know to mail to a foreign country no but here i may i may add u.s bank national but why because i'm sending them a bill for millions every violation that they've um committed it's whatever the government says like a thousand five thousand whatever but my violations let's do a search Right here, fee schedule. Images are scribed. No, fee schedule. No, let's go all out. Let's go legal because I know this is how it was worded. Legal notice demand PDF. No, I mean, uh, uh, see, they're trying to hide it. I, I, you know, they're they're trying to hide it. Let me try duck duck go. I'm 
I guess I don't know if this is small, but yeah, I can't. Um, why did it go to fee schedule? I thought I, I was looking for. Um, Scribed, right? I, I was going to do that next. I was going to go to Scribed. This is, yeah, this is it. So, so you, they're not going to let us see the whole thing. Yeah, maybe they are. Oh, this is a good one. I got something very similar to this. But there's two versions. There's this legal notice in demand. And then there's another one that's called just a fee schedule. Because you're not going to put a freaking 18 page document in court cases and stuff. You, you will, but only if it goes to court. But just for mailing per administrative process, you you make a small one. This is a good one. Mine is oh my god, mine is phenomenal. You might get a clip of it if you go to my my channel and then you know uh, yeah actually I made a video on it. Uh, this it was that was definitely a video. It was my first video. One of my first videos I did it with this girl from Washington State, Washington D.C. or down by Virginia. I, I look, man, I, I tell you, I was new at this at that time. How come? How come it's not? I might have taken it down. I did. It was with this girl. I can't even remember her name. She probably, let's see if it was on my lives. I think this is it. How many minutes public notice? Well, I was trying to make a website public notice now using copyright.gov, copyright depot.gov. I think this could be it's one of these. I don't know. Anyway, but I can't share, I can't share it now. So um so like I was saying, look, look at these right here. You know, what's the main one? The main one is um copyright. You make one. Let's. Uh, you make one that says here. Um, uh, let me just look at mine quick. But I can't even open this up. I would have to stop share. No, I'm not making this come. Let me see something here. Oh. Uh, Uh, you want the information? You gotta wait. I have to stop share because so I have to make sure it doesn't open up in this screen. Because then you could, because you know, it's um private information. Let me see here. Uh I'm drawing a blank right here. Um, pretty much violation. Uh, um, use of the uh, use of copywritten and trademarked ens legis of your name. That's it. Unauthorized use. So go to here, scribed, and, and read through this. It's probably in here, but but um, I don't think they've, they've added it to this. You say unauthorized, or un unlawful use of copywritten, trademarked, and legis, and put your name, right? That's it. And then you put one million, two million. I, I mine, I had mine a hundred million, but I'm gonna reuse that because I did. I took me two weeks. I mastered this legal notice and demand. I worked so much on it and put so much energy on it that um, you know. But one million, one mil. What could you do with one million? What could you do with a hundred million that you can't do with one million? I mean, I mean, if you're you know poor right now, one million's good enough. And then so you do that in the letter, and then you put unauthorized use of um. You could even make it into a bill and a separate page. Unauthorized use of the ens legis. 
a uh, hundred million dollars per you know per occurrence per day per page per um agent or in the uh, per officer agent or individual involved anyway that's it all right so i'm going to close this now that's how you do that let me see so yeah scribed has a lot of stuff you should read this is interesting this is how you do this. I can't. I'm drawing a blank on this. There's a book that sh that 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 shows, but otherwise you can you know you could just pick them out yourself. You know, consumer protection laws, and then you know you got to figure out how to uh, you know <clears throat> find out every. I, I can't even remember here. Let me see here. Fifteen USC. You just go there yourself. 15 USC. Sixteen eighty one. Anyway, I can't. Um, I have to go to back to work because I got to. Uh, I got to start working on send. You know, preparing this. Um, this. Uh, document to send out to Experian. So that's it. I'm getting tired here. I, I might have to take a break and then, yeah, but I wanted to get this information out. So that's how you do that. And like I said, I'm going to do one for, uh, uh, you know, for the Equifax. I guess I was going to go over the Equifax one, but I'm not anymore. I'll make a full one for Equifax and then I'll make a full one for TransUnion with all the information, but I will link all these links in this uh in the description of the video all right so um you know peace and blessings to uh, to all and um i hope you have a great day i'm gonna end this now i'm gonna stop share it was recording and my voice looks like it's good all right peace and blessings to all have a great day